badminton is like a language. You know, we we talk languages, but this 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 bridges languages. It bridges cultural divides. This sport has given me an opportunity to know many friends and also many other cultures too. The idea is to be able to allow people to pursue their interests and their and the things that. Um, they kind of make them tick as a human being. It makes me more confident to talk to other people, to locals. I just love working with, you know, training people, coaching people. The core group, you know, it brings a whole different perspective. They're selfless people, they, they give and they give, and I think we can learn a lot from, from their culture. And I think they give us so much more than what we give them. You open up yourself to different things. It makes you more worldly. So they might have come here for a very particular reason around study, but there's a whole lot of um, aspirations they have and, and experiences that they want to have while they're here. And so we help them kind of network into the community to be able to find those. When I first came to Australia, we, I only started in uh, the university gym. It wasn't really enough. One day we were driving past, so uh, we saw the badminton centre and we thought, you know, it's going to be... Uh, multi-purpose hall too but when we came here we saw 12 courts dedicated to badminton the sport itself and we got really interested so um, I got a lot of my friends to come along too and soon the badminton club also came here. Badminton being a, a universal a sport in Tasmania in particular has been very very centered around Caucasians very few Asians were playing so it was thought that we we're an ideal opportunity with lots of international students at the university, untapped markets, so by encouraging them to come in, it's expanded our competition, given it more depth, and it's just been a much better experience for everybody. I improved my English in skills because I met a lot of locals. Yeah, it's they helped me a lot with badminton. It's also been um, good because people have been in, um, in roles, administrative roles, and so they've learnt skills um, in terms of organisation, in terms of communication, in terms of planning. And some of those skills that they've, they've learnt in that program have been able to translate into other aspects of, of um, their lives. Individuals who are settling in Australia, who are better networked in, are safer. We know that. We know that then they feel safer and that they actually are safer to any of the kind of issues that they might come across, be it uh, safety in the street or people taking advantage of them in employment. A lot of people team seems to go like when they only play singles they think they're only alone but it's always the team effort that makes that one person uh, really well so it's always the sparring and the communication and the feedback uh, between the team is very important. When they're playing and improving they're getting better technically, they're getting better mentally and they think to themselves, well, if I can do far better than I've ever done on the badminton court, why can't I do it in other aspects of our lives? In Australia, they normally put you into a team, and then you play as a team. Yeah, and that's that what is actually very, very hard, different. When I first came here, I didn't really understand um, how to actually play in the team. Oh, obviously the biggest challenge is communication. You know, with, quite often you get the people that their li English is limited, so it's a matter of being able to get the message across to them, what I'm trying to tell them. Some people have different prayer times, so we've got to try and accommodate hitting times that will suit them. They've got um, difficulties in terms of transport. I think it's a little bit expensive. That's why like uh, some other new students that came over to, to the hostel where I'm staying, they are very interested after last night's uh, CALD come and try event, but when they heard about the price, they got a, quite, quite a shock. Well to start with when we looked at the program we thought what are the challenges that we need to overcome. So, so what we did is we're very fortunate to engage Ernest and he's done a, a, a huge amount of work in terms of engaging with the communities. So what we've done is, we've, Ernest has been out talking to the communities, he's been understanding what their needs are, you know, how we can make, help them uh, achieve what they need to do in terms of playing our sport. So they've been out engaging them and it takes about a three or four month turnaround, so it's, it's developing a, a sense of trust. For me, 
me it's about finding people or getting on the coattails of those students with the gregarious personalities and, and uh, supporting the, the students who find it a little bit more intimidating. Uh, the community in South Hobart Badminton Association, they always ask us like, um, you know, how, how we're playing here, you know, do you, what do you think that needs changes, do you want to play our roster, do you want to play our state tournaments. Colt program actually, the manager actually very frequently set up Facebook um, event pages to invite people that he know and hence the people that he know will invite their friends and things like that. So there's a very, um, I would say a very strong backup from our like sort of like social network. If you say it to me, that's one thing, but if you say it to me and the person who's just helped me find a house says it to me, then I just go, actually, this sounds like a good idea. And I think, you know, we need the double check. So if you, if you can find your way to market through, through someone that people already know or already trust or an organisation, um, then I think that, that makes the process a lot easier. When we engage them, don't engage only one time, don't follow it up. We need to have the momentum to actually keep it going. Speaking with the core group, you need to be a bit more articulate, you need to be explaining yourself a little bit more clearly, so you're actually putting a lot more into it and you get a lot more back. Basically, I'll, first of all, I'll tell them we have a very structured place to play, we have a place to play, we have rosters to play and we have good, you know, um, I mean, fun people to play with and definitely we have events with food. <laughs> So yeah, Malaysians love food, so if there are activities plus food, we will come. Uh, actually come and play, enjoy and enjoy yourself here because it's fun, make new people so you don't get bound to your own community only. So you can improve yourself in terms of um, communication skills and confidence. When people are part of something together, they they had this amazing bonding experience, which you walk away and that's, that remains. The confidence that they develop in their game in terms of improving themselves and their self-confidence transforms into other aspects in terms of their study, in terms of their ability to be able to achieve their results in their study, but also in terms of their ability to be able to seek uh, work and also to, um, to be able to you know, earn money and, and feel comfortable in our local community. By hitting their soft spot, you know, the, the things that they like, they would actually basically just talk sense to them, um, try, to, try, to, try to just pull them in for once at least, and then when they actually like it, you don't need to do much, they will just come.